first time I saw a spoon meal was uh, Jared Dolls. He, he's a well-known spoon carver and a friend now. And uh, he had based his off an old uh, photograph uh, from Sweden. So the, it's, you know, it's a historically, or it's a, there's a historic precedent for this type of device anyway. And so this is based on his version, based on that picture. And that's this part. This is the spoon meal head. And uh, I made a few tweaks of my own to that. And then I put it in this, uh, this really nice base uh, what, and I, I first saw the base uh, from Tim Manny, who did, does this design for his uh, shave horse. And uh, it was, I don't, if I'm getting this right, I don't think the base is necessarily Tim. I think Tim also got, got his idea elsewhere as well. So it's kind of a, a round robin of influence with different uh some different woodworkers both from the spoon world and chair making world and that cool. kind of thing yeah. very cool can you tell us a little bit about how you got started doing what you do uh i actually started in san diego awesome. um yeah i finally i had had interest in furniture and uh kind of des design world stuff ever since high school and that was living out there was when I finally had some time and a little extra money to buy tools and start exploring that world. And uh, I just, you know, in, in finding stuff online about furniture building and different things like that, I gradually got exposed to green woodworking world and just I ended up going more and more that way and awesome. less and less the furniture route. I still, I have a pretty much a full set of cabinet and furniture making tools, hand tools and stuff. And I like to do that for ourselves, but it, um, it's really more hobby level than. Gotcha. So your passion is really doing the traditional carving methods, um, the Sloyd woodworking. Yeah, methods. yeah, it just, uh, I don't know, it fit my life, especially moving back. It, it was actually difficult out in San Diego. It was difficult to source wood and yeah, it's things a big like problem that. Out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my first spoons were actually carved out of bone dry olive wood. Ouch. Which is quite, yeah. quite the task. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that I stuck with it after that, but, uh, yeah, moving back here was a huge catalyst. We, uh, were staying at my family's farmhouse and it had a front porch just begging to have spoons carved on it. Nice. And that's, that's where the obsession really kicked into high gear was moving back here. So you, you started out your woodworking career in San Diego Yep. And you moved up here to Harbor Springs, Michigan. What made you move all the way out here? It's kind of a drastic change. Well, this is this is where we grew up. So it was nice. really just coming home and uh, uh, wanted that lifestyle change because we were about to start a family. And just I had always uh, pictured uh, living back here on this farm particularly. Very We've cool. got a big connection here our son's now the sixth generation living on this farm wow that's awesome yeah can you tell us a little bit about michigan sloyd your your branding your name how did you come up with that name um i think a lot of it had to do with being uh you know again we had moved back that was pretty fresh i think i yeah, it, it was, it was, it was actually my, before it was a business name, it was, it was just my Instagram name, I believe, cool. and it was, yeah, it was uh, just a representation of being back in Michigan and feeling uh, a strong connection here, and I, I was, like, very inspired by the, kind of the, I guess like the ethos or the philosophy of Sloyd because it's the, uh, you know, it's, it's woodcraft, but it's also the, their education system of teaching it. And that I was really inspired by, by that whole thing. Um, 
just the the ideas that went along with the just passing education. down the traditional yeah but just it was uh yeah that every that you know it was compulsory they thought they thought it was important that everybody learn how to m- make things for themselves and kind of develop a sense of self-sufficiency and a sense of craftsmanship i try to keep my design simple i don't uh there's an initial period where you when you're beginning carving spoons or maybe you're chasing different designs and experimenting a lot and uh i eventually just you know when i knew i wanted to start selling and doing it for a living i just i wanted to get it down to simple designs that i could produce fairly easily and that would have a fairly uh, mass appeal and maybe kind of be a bridge uh, both the traditional and uh, and maybe more modern and kind of you know just to just to have an appeal to you know lots of people so and traditional designs with a modern twist basically. yeah That's yeah cool. and so i'd say some of my aesthetic is is still influenced but like my uh again for ever since high school for some reason i've always been uh drawn to like danish modern design and yes. that uh, i would say that has an influence over my spoon design too very cool yeah now when did you realize that you wanted to start doing this full time it was so we moved back and i we were still kind of figuring out what to do and there was a couple months there where you know we we were kind of really just settling in and i was carving a lot of spoons on that front (laughs) porch back at the old family farmhouse and uh you know once you have a few dozen spoons it's it's either kind of weird or you know you got to start yeah. doing something, <laughs> Do something with, them. with them get them get them out of there so as gifts or yeah yeah. yeah so i i went uh, up north of town there's some smaller villages and they have some very low key uh markets up there where there's no paperwork or signing up or, you know, uh, being juried in or any, anything like that. You kind of just show up and it's just a, like a little community up there. And so I just, it was very low risk way to test, you know, just see how that felt. See, see if, if it was something, something that, that would actually work. Yeah, yeah. See if I like doing it, see if, uh, people, we're into the whole idea and that kind of thing. And I hadn't necessarily honed my skills for several years at that point. Mm-hmm. That was, that was still, I'd say it was closer to months into carving. Um, and then, so that was kind of a proof of concept. Some people, people were showing interest and it, I was having fun doing it. So over the next, uh, year you know i was we were building a house and starting a family so there was you know i wasn't really going full steam with it and then probably the following season i got to do a couple guest spots at this market i'm in now and then the summer after that they allowed me which was last summer allowed me to do that market full time very cool Yep. Very cool. So. so you you spend your days here in the wood shop making all of your products and then selling at the local farmers market. Do you sell anywhere else? I sell. Yeah, I sell. I would. You know, if I had to guess, it'd be you know not, at least ninety percent of my spoons are sold uh, in the real world at the farmers market right in my town here. Awesome. And that it runs about six months of the year, so that keeps me pretty pretty busy and then in the winter months i do transition more i will sell stuff online like i knew i wanted to do make a living on my own doing something for myself and i knew that to do that it would mean really uh really controlling our cost of living so a huge focus was just on setting up our life here Uh, back in Michigan, on the family farm, and getting, you know, finding a balance where, you know, our, um, 
our cost of living was low, but our standard of living was still, you know, right where we wanted it. You know, we, we really like living here. It's a small community, but it's, we get, you know, there's a lot of advantages. We, we, we're right, uh, we're close to Lake Michigan. You know, we don't mind the cold winters here. Um, that kind of has its whole own charm and you know we can grow our own food here and and again we were lucky we got to you know we got to build on family land and there 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 were circumstances that made it easier but it was still very important to keep always have that in mind to keep the cost of living low to make the burden of the business much lower and uh low ri lower risk um and then again i'm all uh both on the on our we keep our living costs low and i also wanted to keep our business overhead very low um so it, it's conducive to the to the sloyd the whole sloyd ethos and stuff and green woodworking in general all the materials coming right from the farm or you know, but for others that could be, you know, scavenged from neighbors or uh, or from tree services and things like that. The tools themselves, once you've bought them, are pretty low maintenance cost. You don't need much space, shop space and things like that. So, and then for me, the, the farmer's market was pretty key to that whole deal too. It's very low risk, very low overhead. It's a very good way to test the market um, without, you know, the risks and overhead of brick and mortar, things like that. Um, so it was it, it was a process. I also uh, it is I think it would be hard to do it. To, to gradually build to full time. It's almost like you have to make the leap and go full time. Hopefully maybe you have some savings for uh, to get you through that first hard bit. But it's I think it'd be very tough to get a business where you want it to be without going do without doing it full time and putting your entire focus behind it so that would be a consideration i think is uh but so that was kind of my plan it's keep cost of living low keep the cost and overhead of the business low and uh and really go all in with it and uh it's it's been building ever since it it starts out slow but it builds and builds and uh you know there are seasonal aspects to it and um, obviously for me with the markets it's about six months season and uh, you know from about May till Christmas and that that gets pretty good you can get a little bump at Christmas obviously and then those winter months can be pretty slow so that's that's why I started uh, focusing on other things, um, especially online things in the winter. Can you tell us where we can find you? Yep, it's all easy and the same. It, it is, uh, the website's michigansloyd.com and the Instagram is at michigansloyd. And I will include a link down in the description of this video of where you can find Dawson's website and all of his accounts and everything that he does. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Uh, subscribe, like, and share this video with the rest of the world, please. See ya.